my career as a doctor, I came across this quote. It is more important to know what patient has a disease than to know what disease a patient has. Hmm. This is a quote by Hippocrates. He lived 2,000 years ago, but the quote has been revisited numerous times over the years. I had just spent six years learning about every tiny detail of how the body works so that I could diagnose my patients with disease and treat them. But the Hippocrates statement seemed to suggest that this was not enough to do well at my job. What he was saying is that no disease affects any two people in the same way. So if you want to treat the condition, you have to understand the individual. Let me tell you a story from my practice. One day a patient came into my office, let's call her Sarah. Now, Sarah was in her mid-40s, and I had known her since before her children were born. They were now in their teens. She came to me because she was suffering from really bad headaches for weeks. They were making her dizzy and anxious. She was really worried. Was this a serious condition? In her worst fantasies, she imagined that she suffered from the early signs of a brain tumor. I knew that her sister died from a brain tumor 15 years ago. It was a big loss. When I started to, to ask more about her symptoms, she began to cry. And that was when she told me that she was in the middle of getting a divorce. I took her medical history and her family medical history into account, and of course I examined her thoroughly. Nothing indicated either a brain tumor or any other serious condition. I was quite certain that this was a stress-related headache. So I advised her to sleep more and drink less coffee, and I offered to write her a sick net in case she needed a break, because computers and headaches don't mix. And that is where our consultation might have ended, except there was one more issue to figure out. When I examined her, I noticed that Sarah's blood pressure and heart rate were very low. That doesn't match with a stress headache. So I added an electrocardiogram. It did not suggest any other heart-related problem. I wanted a second opinion, so I referred her to a heart specialist. Sarah came back with good news. Her heart was healthy. The heart rate and the blood pressure kept within normal range. So my original diagnosis of headache, dizziness, divorce and distress seemed to be the right one. Now we knew what we were dealing with. But my patient was still suffering. Her head still hurt. She was still worried about her life and how the divorce would go, so we kept in contact. Each time she came to see me, she would update me on the family drama. She would tell me about how she had been tackling her headaches, how my advice had helped. She also went to see a physiotherapist and started yoga. I paid attention to her symptoms and kept a record of her progress, making sure that no underlying disease was playing out. But I also listened to the parts of her life she wanted to tell me about. After some weeks, and with the help of the physio, the yoga, and our regular conversations, it became clear that her headaches had been caused by a massive build of tension in her neck and shoulder muscles, largely due to the extreme stress she was under at home. What this story illustrates is that being a doctor is never one thing. When I diagnose and treat my patients, I have four distinct roles. First of all, I'm an interpreter. I have to understand the symptoms my patients are presenting me with. What do the symptoms mean to them? What are they worried about, even if they don't come out and say it? What else is going on in their lives that might be affecting them? Secondly, 
are there to treat. It can mean advice, inform, sometimes prescribe medication, or involve other professionals with specific skills, like the physiotherapist. Thirdly, I am the medical coordinator. I advocate for my patients, help them navigate the healthcare system, referring them timely to other specialists, like the heart specialist, who can inform the diagnosis and offer specialist treatment. Treatment that I must make sure complies with any other treatments the patient receives. Finally, and maybe the part that few people think about, I'm there to listen and observe, to play witness to my patients' lives and provide an impartial sounding board for issues that might be affecting their health, like Sarah's divorce did. Let's leave Sarah for a moment and have a look at the broader picture. In our world, we are increasingly expecting quick fixes. You have chest pain, heart specialist. You have a rash, dermatologist. You want an erection, you take Viagra. The health system is turning into a marketplace for instant solutions. As doctors and patients, we are constantly being offered new tests and miraculous <laughs> new treatments for those who can pay. <laughs> But is all of this good for your health? Does it give you value for your time and your money? Sometimes, maybe, but all in all, I doubt it. Illness is a complex matter. A doctor who knows the patient and a patient who knows and trusts the doctor stand a better chance of effective diagnosis and treatment. This can even be a matter of life and death. A research paper published in the British Medical Journal in June 2018 compared a number of high-quality scientific articles on what we call continuity of care. Close to 82% confirmed that the quality of the ongoing doctor-patient relationship affects mortality rates. The better the individual's relationship with a long-term doctor, the lower the mortality rates from all causes of death. Amazing. How can this be explained? I'm convinced that trust is key. It goes without saying that you're more likely to follow someone's advice if you trust them you're also more likely to tell them things that you might not volunteer to a stranger. And this knowledge helps the doctor to make an accurate diagnosis. Barbara Starfield, the late Barbara Starfield, she was researcher and professor of public health at Johns Hopkins University. She showed that a long-term relationship with a freely chosen primary care doctor not only increases the individual's health, but also the population's as a whole. Lots of healthy individuals make for a healthy society. It's time to ask, on the basis of this knowledge, if the doctor-patient relationship is so important, why is it that we're driving healthcare towards fragmented specializations. Another internationally acclaimed professor and scientist of medicine, Arturo Casadwell, believes that fragmentation is harmful. By making doctors more specialized, everyone is digging deeper into their own field, really standing up to look over into the next trench. The solution to the problem might be there, right next door. But they are at risk of missing it, because they're so focused on their own field. Don't get me wrong. Hyper-specialization in medicine has produced a numerous of extremely important breakthroughs and innovations. 
recently promising treatment for Ebola and multi-resistant tuberculosis. But we are also facing some serious downsides. By making healthcare more fragmented, we make it difficult to navigate the system as a whole, which in turn puts out barriers for co cooperation. The untamed forces of the market play on our fears for mortality and on our quest for a long and healthy life. <coughs> when we are offered a brand new product, which promises to put us back in control of our health, most of us are more than willing to pay. Consumerism is the hallmark of our times. It affects all fields of society and is also playing out in healthcare. That said, all of us want to stay healthy and get the healthcare we need but we need to take the focus off quick fixes simply because it's not good for our health. I have shown that relationships are hugely important to our health and that fragmentation might be harmful. How would this knowledge influence the way we seek medical care in the future? If you ask me, our answer should be to put energy back into building relationships. We should aim for long-term understanding between patients, family doctors and local nurses. Now, let's go back to Sarah. The episode with her headaches has added another little piece to my puzzle of Sarah. It will be helpful next time she comes to see me with another medical issue. She has, on her side, reconfirmed that she can trust me to take care of her. I will not let her alone in the health market, at risk of ending up in the wrong trench, spending time and money on fragmented solutions. Together, we are getting gradually better prepared to find solutions which comply to what is of importance to Sarah. The woman, the mother, the partner, the professional Sarah. After more than 30 years of clinical practice, I return to the Hippocrates statement again and again. It is true that medical conditions affect each person differently. And these differences reflect who we are as individuals physically and emotionally. We are the product of millions of years of genes and biology, decades of psychological experience, a product of the culture we grew up with and the times we live in. And all this comes to the forefront when we get sick. By sharing this story about Sarah and me, I have shown how I work as a family doctor, a generalist, always scanning the biological, the psychological and the social elements related to medical issues. For Sarah, her biological head and heart, her psychological distress and fear for disease, and the social circumstances related to her divorce. We are many working within the healthcare system who feel a need to defend the core values and reclaim the human side of medicine. Thank you very much.